So, hello guys, and welcome to my werewolf guide for the Wetmaster Marine and No Death Run. We will go over the sets that I wear, why I wear them, certain abilities that I recommend, how to get up your werewolf to fast to rank 10, and then I'll show you basically how, how I do it, and I'll give you certain tips how to react in certain arenas. It's kind of a long video though, since I do, when I go for the No Death Runs, I do take my time. I apologize for that, but yeah. So first race, uh, the first question that many people ask, what race should you take? It doesn't really matter in the, in, in, unless it's just, it just has to be a good stam race. Like Orc, Khajiit is my personal top choice, Red Guard, Orc, Imperial. Essentially take what you want, it's free range here. Even though Khajiit does synergize best with Blood Moon, so Probably, if you're going for a min-maxing kind of like thing, take a Khajiit. I did it on my new character, which has, well, let's just say there's a few passes missing here. So, yeah, and it's I still did it pretty easily. I think on the second attempt, I got my I got my no, no death run down pat. It was very easy. Anyway, human skills. Biting Jabs, classic from the Adric Spear line, Power of the Light from Do Wrath of Dawn, or whatever it's called, skill line, Rendering Slashes, Blazing Spear to proc the um, the Burning Light passive, and of course, Rearming Trap, because hey, why not? Well, and it's also gives you the 10% extra crit damage. On the back bar, we use a 2H to get the Minor Heroism from Carve, and the other skills are like Vigor, Extended Ritual or Cowl Tops, that's a flex spot. And then the Rune and Repentance. This Werewolf skill that we use are Claws of Life. That is, this is our pretty much our main heal. The, it's a very good healing of a time in PvE. In PvP it does kind of suck because it gets double nerfed, because the damage is halved and the healing is halved, so essentially it's down to a quarter of what it's supposed to be. In PvE it actually is pretty nice. It heals you for like 1.6 to 2k per add that you hit with it. So yeah, it's very nice. I can highly recommend it. Make sure to have your well to rank 10 and all the passives. You will need them. You can do that by going to Northern um, Auridon, uh, Southern Auridon, into the Monkey's Rest. There's like a lot of monkeys surrounded around the house. And you can basically just kill the monkeys there. You can charge up your well at the beach, north, um, southwest of it. And then go there and basically feral pounds from monkey to monkey leveling up your werewolf, since the werewolf levels up by the amount of NPCs killed and not experience gained while killing. So you can literally kill frogs, if you know a good spot where lots of frogs are. I think in Gradwood there's one spot where there's like a shit ton of frogs. Anyway, so we use the blue stamina food. Since we're wearing Vicious of Feed and we don't need the Dubious, we use the Essence of Weapon Power, which gives us Major Savagery, Major Brutality, uh, both things we don't have this setup skip, um, from skills and we get back stamina. This is my setup I usually use for normal dungeons like vet dailies, DLC dailies or even yeah, trials. Hunting's Rage is a craftable armor set you get from South and Reaper's March. It's a 6 trait set as far as I know. Really nice, really solid of course, you can use Relic Quen, but I've never been a big fan of like two proc sets a central or three proc sets, so yeah, that's your choice. I think two is quite enough. Molakina and Blood Moon, that's as far as I go. The weapons that you get in Red Milestone Marina are these beauties. The bow, which pretty much everyone loves. Well, hates getting, but it's a nice weapon. The Inferno Staves for swords. The healing stuff is very nice as a healer. Sword and Board was nice and niche builds, but not anymore. Same with Dual Wield. And of course the 2H, which was meta pretty much in PvP a long time ago, but it got, well, it got nerfed and then nobody won. <laughs> Essentially it's a waste of the space wearing it. So we're using 5 pieces of Vicious Ophidian for our bit Maelstrom setup to get that crazy sustain and the crazy speed. And then we use the Blood Moon for bursting the bosses essentially. Make sure to have a 5-1-1 setup, so since both armor sets are medium sets, you will have to wear a heavy t uh, heavy helmet and a, li and a light shoulder to get the 5-1-1. In my case, I don't have mine knotted anyway, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. 
Enchant them all with stamina. Your health should be enough with the Mighty Chudan. It's like 17k or so. Enchant the main hand with poison and the off hand with weapon damage to get the most out of it. In werewolf form you don't get the weapon, weapon passives anyway, so it doesn't really matter whether you use two dual daggers, dual axes, it doesn't matter. You don't get the passives anyway. What matters are the traits and the quality, so try and get your weapons gold. The armor of course in infu uh, full divines and as a as a as the Mundus stone I use the Warrior. Since we are Templar, we get the Multiplier with 6%. <coughs> and we get also the 15% from Medium Armor. It does scale pretty well on Templar, so yeah, Warrior is best for that in my opinion. So to reduce the lag that we get in the dungeon, I would recommend doing this. You go into the guild roster and search for your own game attack. <coughs> that way it will, it will only tra track the location of your, of your character, not of the up to two and a half thousand other characters which are in the five guilds that you're in. It really does help in a bit lag in PvP and PvE, so yeah, that's a high recommendation from my point, from my side. The second recommendation is that when you go inside the dungeon, don't take the quest. I know it, <clears throat> ever since the Master Marina came out with the Arsenium DLC ages ago, it has been known to cause a lot of crashes. I don't know if they fixed it yet, I don't really want to find out as far as I'm concerned. It's just making sure, playing it safe. <coughs> so, since, since the first arena is pretty boring, I'll use that to explain the CP. The CP that we use is, I'll start at the tower, Mundestone, that's the left green one, and go clockwise until I reach the Lord. So first, you might want to note this down. We use 48 under the Warlord and 11 under Sprinter to reduce the cost of sprinting and Warlord reduces the cost of break free. Since we do get CC'd pretty often in the in the Milestone Marina, there are lots of ads which are like uppercutters and do all kind of annoying stuff. Then there's 64 in the Mooncalf to get increase our stamina recovery by 13% and 56 under Tenacity to increase the magic and stamina from our heavy attacks which, by the way, stacks with the off-balance passive, which gives us back 100%, and the werewolf passive Persuade, which gives us like another 100%. So basically, from heavy attacks, we do get, with off-balance proc, we get back 212%. Well, I don't know if it's multiplied or... Uh, anyway, you get back a lot of stamina from heavy attacks from off-balance targets. Then, from tumbling, we put 48 points on tumbling, because, you know, a dodged attack is always better than a blocked attack. And just to play it safe, since there's a lot of undodgeables, unblockables, we do put, let's say, 40 under Shadow Ward. Okay, we got three left. Put the three left uh, well, CPs which are left under Sprinter. Then you have 9%, and you'll have a good sustain. Then we have the Atanach, it's tree that's the middle blue one. We put 44 CP points under the Physical Weapon Expert. That increases the damage done with our light and heavy attacks as a werewolf by 24%. This is pretty much our main damage source. Combine that with Blood Moon and we get pretty hard hitting light attacks. I mean, without Blood Moon practice, like 16k-ish with, with Undaunt, with all the passives. With the, this character hits like 15k. And with Blood Moon proc, it goes up to like 18, 19k, even 20k if you have the proper sets on. So then we, then we use Master at Arms to increase the damage done with direct damage attacks by 22%. That increases basically 80% of our damage that we do. And then now we're at the Ritual Tree. That's where most of CP points go. We put 20 on the Thermoturge to increase the damage done by Dots, which is basically our Claws of Life, our Heals, our main healing over time, and our Werewolf Bleeds. Then we put 52 on the Precise Strikes. Our crit raging ratio is not that high, I think it's like 40%-ish, let me check. Our crit ratio is like 65%, so yeah, it actually makes sense putting the points in there. As a Khajiit, we have a pretty high crit ratio. Then we put 24 on the Piercing to increase our Physical Penetration, and 64 on the Mighty to increase our Physical Poison and Disease Damage done by 13%. Then we come to the Sti, that's the left a red one. We put 72 points on the Ironclad, that reduces the direct damage you take, 30 on the Spell Shield to, reduce the, to increase our Spell Resistance, and 22 
to get increase our physical resistances since we are in medium armor. Then the lady. We get we put 49 points on the hardy and 49 points on the elemental defender and 48 on the thick skinned. And that's pretty much it for the CP. So we find ourselves in the second arena. Here, um, the money, the, mo the biggest pain point in this arena is the spinning blades because they put a bleed on you. You can see it in the lower right corner. It ticks for like I think 500 or so per stack. So if you get get the full stack, so that's like that times 25, you do take a hefty amount of damage if you if you just stand in them. So try and dodge them, avoid them. You get used to it, and if you don't have the experience in this arena, you can just grab the healing um, sigil. Or if you make like a mistake. That's why in this arena, I would recommend hanging out at the north side of it, because right next to the healing sigil, that's the best spot you want to find yourself in. The mini bosses in this uh, in this arena are the Dwemer Centurions. They don't have much health; it's like a hundred k. Nothing special, nothing big. Just nuke them and try not to let the dots stack up too much. Because you know you can see it here when the dots stack fully, it's a, like a one k dot. And since as well, if we don't have that much magicka to heal ourselves, I would highly recommend uh, not tempting your luck there. The first thing what you should do when you hit a NPC is hit him with the claws of life. So even if he like bolts away or does some stupid uh, other mechanic, you still get the health back from the claws of life. I think it hits up to six targets. Even though no, I think they removed the AV cap, so it hits an unlimited amount of targets, as many as you can hit, and you get back tons of health from it. There, second a second mini boss, Dreamer Centurion, easy kill. Just make sure to block his heavy attack. That one actually does hit. Kind of nasty, and you should be fine. Just don't stand in the middle because if you stand in the middle, you get a knockback, and it does a bit of damage, and you land at the edge of the round. <clears throat> the final done, the final boss here is a Centurion Champion, which put blobs mortars at you, which do lightning damage. They don't do that much damage, so if you keep your claws of life up on him, you should be fine. Unfortunately, if he goes into this immortality mode, when you once you hit the Marcus. And switch, then you, then the other one plops up and you have to start hitting him. The markers are 75%, 50%, and 25%. But here, having a pretty decent spell resistance as a wealth really turns out to be very handy. So yeah. In itself, the dungeon is pretty easy. Our resistances should be around, yeah, close to cap on spell resistance and around 30k physical resistance in werewolf form, so we don't take that much damage. So, the Centurion Champion's almost dead, I hope. You can use the distance between them to keep your Feral Palms on the, tar on the bosses to increase your werewolf timer. The down the, this boss, is, it's annoying but not difficult. You just have to be persistent. And well, thanks to Vicious Ophidian, we have a very good stamina sustain. And dead. The next, done. The next arena, I think, is a toxic shock one. Yeah, toxic shock. This one in itself is actually pretty easy. Nothing special. Just remember two things: kill the plants religiously, and I mean, like, focus them as soon as they come out. They will ruin your day. And don't fight in the water because the boss electrocutes the water and it does like a 2k damage or so per second. The main ads you want to focus are the Nerne, are the Lamias. Some of the Lamias do like a weird knockback, ground shock thing which does hurt, hit hard. You don't want to stand in that. And the boss lobs like poisonous pools all over the place. And as a wealth, we take tons of damage from that. You can see it's taking for 3.6k. So don't stand in that. Avoid it as much as you can. The first mini boss in here over here is the Wamatsu. Kill the archers first. 
the, the mages first. That's always the rule in the in Master Mina. Always go for the rangers first. You can dodge, uh, you can dodge his first spitting electrocute thingamajig. <coughs> so do it if possible. If you can't, just don't stand in front of his face. <coughs> The next mini boss, I think, should be the the hags. It should be a, an an advisor or something like that. So yeah. The snakes are not that much much of a problem. Then again, so the basic rule: don't stand in front of them. The ads die extremely fast, so there's nothing special here. They can see a plunge. If it hits you, it snares you, and does a well, pretty low dot. But the snare is the annoying thing because it keeps you inside the water, so you take more damage that way. So that's the stamp sword boss. Oh yeah, the hag bosses. The queen's advisor is the next one. Also, not that the that difficult boss. It's yeah, just the same essentially. I think you can see my pets doing, doing a good job. The snake's always pretty much a one-shot, one-hit wonder. The dangerous thing is really avoid the poison aries and the water as far as possible. They can see you see a plant coming out there, kill it fast. Because the plants don't really desummon after the right between the rounds, they just go into like a sleeping mode. And Blood Moon is procced, <laughs> and the queen's already dead. The advisor is already dead. You can use your gap closer to avoid the, uh, the water, by the way. That's how I usually do it. The feral, feral pounds. And it also increases your um, werewolf X duration. So it's pretty handy. On the final boss, I would, uh, in a no death run, I would recommend getting the defensive sigil and offensive one. And just nuking the boss. It's literally the easiest method. Get your blood moon proc. You can see four and it's proc. And this, yeah, burn. <laughs> With the defensive sigil, it takes almost no damage, and the offensive one gives you a crazy single target, crazy damage output, so, yeah. Get it done. This is probably one of the Dells I'll struggle least with. The first one, for some weird reason, one of the first ones, like two years, two and a half years ago, I struggled big time with the first boss, that was so embarrassing. And the second one was pretty easy compared to that. <clears throat> On this one, you'll want to position yourself in the northeast, of the area, next to like here, next to the healing, the he healing of the time um, sigil, and try and stay there, mostly. The dangerous enemies here are the fire mages and two H bills. They uppercut you and they do hit hard. The mini bosses, I think, is first a pyromancer, then it's a lightning maid, and then the final one is like a stabby kick kind of like thing. Don't stand in that in that fire pool. And also, if the, when the boss does that weird ground AV thing, if you're unlucky, the, it causes you, the attacks to miss you a lot. It causes your attacks to miss him most of the time, so try not to stand in there if possible. The priority targets in this one are definitely the Dreamospheres. They either put like a shockwave towards you or a lightning field. The, like the mechanic top priority targets are the clockwork sentries, since they do like a two and a half k single attack lightning ball, which shoots towards you, and they have six of those things, it can add up quickly. So avoid that. You can see that lightning field hit me for like six and a half k. It's best not to take it, and that's with cap resistances. So if you had like ten k resistances, like the average where uh, average stamina player, <laughs> don't get hit by it. It'll almost one shot you. You can see we have, oh yeah, this is the lightning, the lightning mage, Arifma. I can't for the life of me remember the names. The good thing is even when the clockwork sentries have a shield on, it's very easy to burn through it. The shields are like 20k damage, so you'll be through, the, through it in a heartbeat.
one of the things that I did notice in uh, Master Marina is that higher damage, with higher damage you can skip so many mechanics that it makes it almost super easy. If you try it on the, go, I, can, I challenge you to try it. Try it on a character you've never played. Like if you're a stamina player, try it on a max orc. With like a super, well, compared to stamina, super low single target. And you'll notice that you actually have to do so many mechanics more than you used to. I mean, you can do it obviously, but it's, you have to actually do a lot more work. It's a lot more work running with low damage in Maelstrom. And you can, yeah, if you see your stamina is low or there's a bit too many ads bunching up on you, you can fear them away with your Howl of Despair or whatever, the Ferocious Roar, whatever it's called, the fear attack from the will. And now we get to the final boss, yay. Kill the sentry, that's very important. Make sure they don't come out. And then grab the weapon damage sigil, that makes it easier for us to nuke him before he does anything. Jump in, slap your dots on, get the Blood Moon proc in C3. Four and Blood Moon. <laughs> select without fractures, select 18k light attacks. I can see my poison, my pot wear off. And he's dead already. This is probably the easiest. Well, not the. Yeah, he's probably one of the easiest bosses with high damage because you can just nuke him. And you, he's a very, he runs at a very station, uh, stationary pace. Stationary pace. So, the next arena. This one is, oh yay, our favorite arena, the ice arena. Every stamina player will tell you that he hates this. <laughs> it's not, it's probably the, the hated arena as a stamina player. The priority targets here are the, not the hearts find a way, but there's like ice mages, I can't remember the name. Then the frost spiders, well first of course the trolls, if you don't kill them it's really screwed. Then the Chillbane, and uh, then the, the those two H guys. Chill and Chillbane, Heartfinder. Even the outclass, the two H guys are more dangerous since the uppercuts can catch you at a stupid moment. But really make sure to not let those throw at all through. This mini boss, uh, Agirgoth, who makes those names, seriously? She does like a flurry attack, then she transforms into the well at 25%, but eh, she dies quickly. Anyway, she doesn't live very long. Avoid the water, by the way. And if you get into the second round, try, I, I would recommend taking the, if you want to play it safe, take the healing of the time sigil first, and then the defensive one. Go for the archers first. The orcs have the nasty habit of going into weird rage modus. Don't let that happen if possible, but of course, here for example, I made a mistake, I should have gone for the children first, but well, they died so quick anyway. And here, if, even if you see a troll smashing up your eyes, leap him and bash him to interrupt him and then kill his ass. This ogre elder is, yeah, also easy kill. Now comes the round three. Grab the defensive one here first because there's a lot of ranged NPCs here, like the Lamina, um, the Narnades, and the defensive sigil reflects a lot of the damage. That's the safest bet. You can see I'm really hesitant in going into that water because the damage, I think it adds, it gets stronger over time, so you can't just stand in there. You can see there's a troll. I wanted to leap the troll, but I hit the Nernate. On the second attempt, I managed to do it. Here I got hit by like a salvo of something. And dodge rolling. My Blood Moon procs, and then, yeah. But here, really, focus the ranger, focus the ice mages. Those guys will kick your ass. Even in, even with cat resistances, they hit so hard, it's not even funny anymore. Round four is where you get lots of giants, essentially. Go for Aki first. You can go on like the East Island. Then you kill Aki first, then you then you kill uh, Vigi, and then the rest. Because with a bit of luck, your Blood Moon will proc an Aki, carry over to Vigi, and then you can basically kill those two giants. Because they, they hit, have like a club attack, which stuns you, and uh, stuns are never good, because they can kind of cause other one-hit attacks to hit land on you. 
the Lamanites are not that much of a problem. Then after those two guys come, the final boss in this uh, in this round is Bor. He's the big brother, I'm guessing. Anyway, he has more health and he summons like bear pets. He's still an easy kill though. And then we get to fight the matriarch or whatever, however you pronounce it. Stop on the south island. Take the sigil of haste. Track your and your werewolf pets on the matriarch and try to get her to 75% as fast as possible. Because now you can see where then when she does this rare red, when she gets red and uh, goes towards the ice, she will jump on it and destroy it. And if you're on that ice plate, when she does that, you get one shotted. She also CCs you a lot. Try and kill the archers as fast as possible. The Narnians are not that much of a problem, but hey, they only have 100k health, so... Felt like a 2-3 hit wonder. And then get her to 50%, because that's when the next ad wave will come. Kill that troll, of course, kill the trolls. Grab the defensive sigil, and this, this is the important part. Ignore the, uh, the adds now, because you're pretty much immortal now. And basically just burn down the matriarch. And it's important to not stand in her uh, in her AOEs around her. Anything around around the boss is almost always a one shot in this arena. Feed, and then on to the next one. The spiral shadows. This is one of the. This is probably the relax before the worst round ever comes kind of uh, kind of round. This one is easy. You just got to make sure to keep your, the, those totems clear of spider webs. You can see here spider webs around them. You can get rid of the spider the spider webs by luring the ticks that spawn and killing them on top of it. That's probably the easiest way. You can see here I'm trying to get my wealth up. However, I'm just calling it a tick because that's what it essentially is. The Dread Scorpions can be nasty, but yeah, usually they aren't. The main worry in this round is we're literally the lightning fields that the boss drops down from up on top. Another tick, kill it. The, there's a funny animation when the Wealth uh, throws throws the poison glands of this thing. Every now and then, the there's there's a few spiders lots summoned. It'll give you a warning like, oh, the swarm attacks, seek a glowing stone or something. That's the reason why I need to keep the stones clear, because if they're covered by size spider webs, they don't glow, and you're basically screwed. Because the spiders uh, spawn, do a pretty hefty amount of damage, and they snare you, so if you don't get to us rock fast, it's going to end badly. You, you pretty much can't survive it. Kill another tick. You can see those in the in the routine rounds. There's these, there's these spider uh, web, web spinners, I think they're called, which try and just uh, will spin the the rocks up again. So make sure to keep an eye on all the rocks. And as soon as you see one spawn, kill it, and fast. You have like 15 seconds ish to get there. Okay, then again. And I think in the next round, a bunch of um, lurchers spawn. <laughs> you can see that's a proof that this is a new character. We wouldn't even have them at max rank yet. The mini bosses are usually flash astronauts, which tend to use a lot of CCs in the first rounds. Then in the last few rounds, they turn into um, what's it called? Yeah, the lurchers. You can see I'm trying to keep an eye on all the, all the stones. And never stand still in this arena. If you stand still, the boss will start stunning those lightning AVs. Even feeding is a high risk business in this arena. If you um, clear off all stones, I think there's like six, six, five or six of them, you the, uh, the locks will stun all the NPCs in the vicinity. You should try and only do it at the on the final boss, but Eh, there's, there's a lot of ticks which come along the way, so 
don't be too worried if you activate it too early. You can hear the swarm attacks and I'm looking for this stone. There again, Flash Atronach is a boss. I think the only one where they actually, where the, where, where the, where you get alerted is the last round, I think. Void Lurcher, that's the name. They do like a smack attack with both hands, which is kind of irritating. And then the smack with their left hand, which also CCs you. They basically just <laughs> stunning wonders. Here I thought for a short moment that that was kind of screwed because the glowing rock came up late, because I only had one free. So I kited them around a bit until the second one spawned. Kill that web spinner. This boss, he does uppercuts, which you have to do, which you should dodge, and he also does some weird poison dot, which he tries and throws at you. But it's all dodgeable, so no worries there. Now you can see why I'm wearing the vicious Zophidian. Even if I do don't need that much stamina sustain, all this he sees and dodge rolls that you have to do to do in this area really can take a toll in your stamina. So it's best over uh, over sustaining at some points because you have to block, dodge, roll, sprint <laughs> when the troll tries and kill your ice fields. On the final boss, the final only, the only tip that uh, that I can give you is get that weapon damage signal, burn it down to like 60, 50, 60 percent, kill the web spin, which will always show up somehow. And I can see here I'm looking for a glowing rock. I grab the sigil of haste, and then yeah, there's another. Then the glowing rock pop up. I use it to scare off all the web spiders. Then I grab the defensive sigil and then go straight for the boss and try and nuke it down. There's literally no point in going for the ads here. Just nuke it. And as I mentioned before, any AoE which spawns around the boss is still usually a one-shot AoE. Always. Now comes our favorite round. Poison. Something every werewolf loves. Not. Oh, okay. The only thing which you need to know in this round is avoid the flowers. <laughs> Try and make a wide, go wide uh, way around them because if you run through them, through them, they will trigger, and then you get hit by a dot which ticks for like six, seven k per second, which means it's basically not survivable for longer periods of time. Unless the assault can, can spam shields, and even then, it's well, fifty percent survival times. So it really is not nice. Between each, the, each of the rounds, you get a Swamp Troll as a mini-boss. They die pretty quick. The only irritating thing is that at 
they usually go into this weird rage mode and they just don't want to die. <clears throat> so, round two. I think in this one, as I'll go with this on the next one, where you get uh, Wamatsu as a mini boss, and then again, don't stand in front of him, and he also spawns those, those light, four lightning balls around him. Here, your main job is to kill the Venom Callers, because now they appear in round two. They'll basically cause all the flowers in the arena to explode, and coming back in like five, six second intervals. So the longer you don't kill them, the higher the chances that you get hit by one of those pesky flowers. Again, a Swamp Troll as a mini boss, nothing special. But you gotta make sure that one, because once the trolls are enraged, they go, they get, they do a lot more damage than before, so try not to get hit by the rocks once they're big and enraged. Here you can see I almost get hit by a flower. Sometimes the dots, the damage over time symbol in your buff tracker is a bit buggy, so if you see that green thing light up in your buff debuff tracker, just go into the pool. Play it safe, you don't know if the game's currently, if you're in a lag spike or, spike or something. Yeah, here it's here, uh, in round 3, you can see if there's two venom shots. If you kill one before you kill, uh, if you kill one, only one, the Wamatsu will spawn. So try and kill them at the same time. Or if in my case you have a pretty high damage output and you can essentially just nuke the second one. You can see here I'm putting on my dots and now boom, those lightning balls come. Don't get hit by them, they actually do hit like a truck. In the last round before the boss, they mainly this one. In the beginning, I get three archers, I think, and a one melee type attacker. Make sure to bash the archers because that's taking in the hits like a truck. And then when the two trolls come soon, well, I would recommend to just focus one and then get rid of the other one. You can see here I got hit by a dot. Go to the pool immediately before it starts ticking, and then you should be fine. Try and nuke down one fast so you get hit by two archers at, at the same time. And of course keep an eye on your stamina. I'm trying to charge up my stamina here. Because then again, playing it safe, you don't want to ruin that flawless run. You can see there's another random caller spawning on the field. Make sure to not, not to keep your eyes on the ground against those uh, poison AOEs and yeah get rid of that venom caller really really fast I can't tell you how many flawless ones have been spoiled by that by those NPCs in the final round with the Arcogonian Behemoth this is a bit of a timing thing grab the healing sigil and then try and get him to 70% as soon as possible because then well unless you get a venom caller like I did that's of course bad RNG um, because then he will spawn two sorcerers which kind of like they, do, they send like lightning balls, attack the one um, furthest away from him, because then the one closest to him will set up a bubble which protects you from the damage. You stand in the bubble and try and hit the boss as much as possible. If you're unlucky as me, of course, he's like one meter too far away. Then as soon as the brilliant yelling stops, kill the other sorcerer as fast as possible. Because if not, he will teleport to you, slam on the ground, and pretty much almost insta-kill you. Especially if a boss is the set, charging up one of those heavy attacks as well. They can see another Venom Caller. Kill it fast. Got it quite hit by poison. Actually, I was actually pretty lucky in that thing. Then the best bet is to grab the Defensive Sigil and nuke him.
And that's pretty much the worst arena. Once you're through this arena, uh, this round, this arena, you're pretty much safe. The only boss which can kind of screw you up is on the next round, on the next arena, the boss in the fourth round, the mini boss, because he likes dropping standards and chaining you in. And then the last arena, of course, the blood, the, the titan, which jumps down from above. The priority targets in this round are the King God, I think they're called. They're like mages which spawn a circle of fire around their head and then start shooting at you with fireballs. So anything which shoots a fireball at you is high priority target. King God, there you can see it. The Gandariken or just healers, they're annoying but not that important. And I seem to have lost one of my pets somewhere. It's one of those bugs which happens in Master Marinas. You sh don't worry too much about it. And between the rounds you get mini bosses, they're usually like infernal infern infernal destroyers. And they you can only kill them if you destroy the stone first. And you can see as you can see at even despite having cap resistances unblocked, he actually t takes me down six seven K for this CC. Round two. We get like lots of beetles, nothing special. And I think one king guard in the back, which you should focus. The king guard somehow always seem to spawn behind that rock over there in the east side. Another mini boss. Because since he spawned so many ads, I was trying to kill the ads first before going for him because those things can backfire badly if you ignore them too much. I actually thought that the thing was dead, but it still had like 2k health on it. Now it's dead, and then you can destroy the Infernal Destroyer. Heh, <laughs> plain words. That would be actually funny as a monster set. Imagine like a set which does like... It works like Vulcan Scoria, but instead of summoning a meteor, it summons one of those things. That would be actually pretty funny. It would be like a Mag Decay's version of... What's it called? More of the Infernal. <laughs> More of the Infernal Destroyer. And then in this round you also get two uh, two H guys and then one healer. Two H guys are nasty because they like using uppercuts and cleaves. Block, make sure to block either block or dodge the uppercuts. Do not take them if possible. And then again you have to destroy the walk and kill the infernal destroyer. Here I got a bit unlucky because I got that Kingard smacking me from the far. You can dodge the fireballs, but they just get worse and worse. And I think the damage also will double, it increases over time. You can block that ground smack attack, by the way, from the from that infernal destroyer. You don't have to, but it's well recommendable. It's survivable if you don't dodge it. Oh yeah, and by the way, the this gigantic fire mort is being lobbed at you the whole time. You can see here one of those kin gods is trying to ruin my day. You can either bash him or just kill him. Preferably killing fast. That's always a better option. <coughs> so anyway, this is the last round. And then we get a boss for like stopping standards and and ch spamming chains. So basically destroy the rock, and as soon as he does that engulfing flames on you, back off a bit, maybe take a healing sigil because it does actually hit pretty hard. Unlike the final boss, you only have to destroy the rock once. But the final boss is that if, if she comes out of that out of that. CC moment when you destroy the rock, you have to destroy the rocks all over again to keep burning it down. It's somewhat irritating. I usually, tr what I, what I usually try and doing is, I like destroying rock A, going to the second rock in the west, I think, destroying that rock as well, and then going to the final boss, uh, to the final rock in the south, grabbing the weapon damage sigil, and then try and nuking it down in one step. 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here I got a bit distracted by the king guard over there in the back, otherwise I probably would have gotten him. You can see I'm trying to charge up my stamina here. Yeah, there. There's the second King Guard. And then, yeah, kill him, go for the last rock, and then finish the boss off. And then we come to the most, probably most fun round, actually. Because you're traveling up the card, the mechanics are very nice in the last round. I actually do like it. Even though Magicka players seem to struggle on the top part, because it drains your stamina big time. Because you seem to have to sprint all the time. So, last arena. We're almost finished. Once you're here, play careful. You don't want to ruin it. You don't want to screw up in the last round. It's so frustrating when it happens. When you have a yeah, full bar moment. The th only thing which you have to know here really is to avoid the ghosts and avoid the blue, the white ghosts and <clears throat> let the go, let the yellow ghosts go through you because you get like a buff. When the buff stacks three times, you can CC pretty much everything in the whole arena and, um, yeah, clear all the ghosts as well. The no ads which are, well, apart from the, crematorium guards, there's no ads that you have, to, you have to kill fast. But those crematorium guards do kill them fast. They do put like a flame dot on you, which just keeps ticking if you don't kill the crematorium guard fast. It's like the ones in White Gold Tower. And the archers put, do that um, taking aim attack as well, so also don't get hit by that. Try and kill them before they start doing it. Or into, you can bash them to interrupt it. You can see how I'm just keeping an eye on those ghosts. I'd recommend that you zoom out to the maximum level. It makes it easier <clears throat> kind of spotting all those things. They can see that that poison AoE takes like once every half second, I think. And it does like 1k damage each, so that's like 2k damage per second. And if you don't watch out, that will actually add up quickly. The Ogrim, he does like a 4 to 5k fireball. Not that much of a problem, it's just irritating, and if you're caught in a bad moment, it actually can kill you. If you're like CC, then there's like a mortar from the lava from the edge, and then he slams that on you, it's... Uh, it, it can all add up very quickly. Another crematorium guard, kill him fast. I think in round 3, that's when you have to start watching out for the summoners. Because they will try and summon... Uh, Big skeleton, big fire skeleton, like the one in Stone Falls when you do the quest line, like the Bell Wrath, or whatever it's called. So yeah, try not and get that far. Kill the one, kill them before they start summoning him. <clears throat> the Ogrim is actually pretty dangerous. He forces me to dodge draw a lot, and the fireballs do hit me for like 4k ish. But then again, he's easily killable, doesn't do much damage. You just gotta expect the Crematorium Guard, and if you see a Crematorium Guard, kill him before he kills you. That's essentially the rule. Right there, I can see 10k back with one heavy attack. The Fire Mortars from the side, they do like 7k damage, so try and fight in the middle, next to the Summoning Circle. They can see, these are the ones, the Nar Narkinas. They are the ones who try, will try and summon the giant skeleton. I probably should have tried and get that ghost, but oh well. And again, try and kill the Nar Narkinas. And then the surviving Kuni Lurker.
So, now comes the interesting part. First you have to kill a crematorium guard, then the, the summoners, They can see what happens when you get hit when the ad when the ghost hits the ads. It gives them like a some kind of empowering, which makes them super tanky compared to everything else. <clears throat> now in this part, I think there's I'm pretty sure there's an Ogrim and two Narkinas. So if you have a spectral explosion, which you get from popping three of those uh, ghosts, that's a good moment. <laughs> and really, Narkinas when they try and summon, they have highest priority. The skeleton is beatable, but it makes stuff unnecessarily difficult. So, and now we're almost at the, almost at the end. In round five, first you get an ag group. There's a crematorium guard which comes at you. Make you sure to kill him fast, and then you and then after you kill the other NPCs, there's a big titan which comes down from above. So make sure to get that weapon damage sigil, maybe even the defensive one, and basically nuke him. He's got 150k, 450k health, so with a decent damage output, it should be like 15 seconds ish. And then make sure you get rid of the other ads because right after his death, like a group of ads spawns very quickly. I think it's the timer. It's like 20 seconds after the that guy comes out, a lot of ads struck spawn. So yeah, kill those and then try and charge up your wealth. As much as possible because the last round is get, gets a bit hectic. Oh, I can see there my food ran out, charming. I was trying to heavy attack. I think it was so my controller is bugging around or something. I was trying to get the ghost because I was trying. To, if you time it right, you can do the spectral explosion like a second before the next round starts and then the boss starts with it being stunned. The problem is I'm pretty sure the spectral will resets after each round changes. I'm trying to fix still trying to figure that out how some people do it. But oh well. It's also good and here I've missed the timing like a bit, but So basically the mechanics over here in the last boss is essentially you get into seventy percent. Dodge that well elders called it the crystal frag and then get upstairs. The way to get upstairs is to first kill that other NPC, and then you drag that clan fear made out of lightning towards one of the portals. And then you have to kill him right on top of the portals, get rid of that crematorium guard, and then travel up. And on top you'll find three crystals, animus crystal, which is something like... It's, it's, it reminds me of like the Soul, you know, from Harry Potter, where Lord Voldemort has like stuff where he puts his soul in there. That's kind of like the same thing. Unless you kill them, you can't kill the boss. And yeah, he loves big mortars from above and shoots you with crystal frags. Don't stand too far to the outer edge because he can stun you and knock you off the edge. After each rock is destroyed, you, he will try and knock you off with the blast. So and he summons a big crystal wall, which you have to hide behind to not get knocked down. He knew I didn't wouldn't make it, so I just jumped down and killed the crematorium guard quick. Ooh, that was a close one though. That that crystal brass hit me really hard. At this point, it's a good. This is a good time to grab the defensive war sigil if you can, and go back up and finish the last crystal. With a bit of luck, you can do it all in one go. If not, don't stress yourself. You're not going for a quick run. Then you go up, kill the last one. I was pretty sure it was, well, usually when you do that, you don't get smacked down into the lobby. You land in the middle. <clears throat> and here's the point where you grab the weapon damage sigil, make sure that the boss doesn't get any ghosts, then basically nuke him. Don't stand in that one-shot AoE, well, hard-hitting AoE. Another crystal frag. He's almost 25%. And yeah, just execute him. And finito. So I hope you guys really, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And yeah.
<laughs> I think this was probably was the first time where I got the Master Mania Champion and the False Conqueror and the Stormproof in, in one run. <laughs> So yeah, peace out.